Today, we start Module 2, Analysis of Algorithm Efficiencies and the Brute Force Method. Part A, Efficiency Measurements and the Growth Functions. Part 8.1, Selection Sort. Yeah. First, we study a simple problem. Yeah. Problem number four, sort an array. Uh, we know the sort problem, right? Yeah, very simple. Given an array, A, with N elements, how to sort it in ascending order? Yeah. In our uh, CS2250, 2250, you learn the bubble sort, right? Yeah, bubble sort. Yeah. Later in this class, we will talk about bubble sort another time. Yeah. All right, so that means you have some experience about sorting. Yeah. For this class, we will learn many sorting algorithms. Yeah. All right, first, let us look at the problem type sort. The reference I give you, uh, section 3.1 on page 98. Yeah. All right, so let us solve this problem first. Yeah. All right, uh, first, we, when we solve a problem, most of the time, we based on our experience. You need to have some experience to solve a new problem. Yeah. It is very hard to solve a problem without any experience, right? So think about that. If one has no experience, it would be very hard to solve any problem, okay? Any relatively hard problem. Yeah. All right, so here, how do we use our experience? For this class, we have not learned a lot of knowledge, right? But we we learned something. Yeah, we have some experience. So we can use that to solve this problem. Yeah. All right. So what kind of experience we need to use? Yeah, so we just learn solving this problem, finding the minimum problem, right? Yeah, we solve that. We know how to get that solution. Yeah. So here the question is, can we use the experience in that old problem and apply it, modify it? Then we solve this new problem. That is the approach we're going to take here. Yeah. All right. Let us explore the properties. We need to understand the current problem. When we understand it, we need to find some key property. Yeah. All right. So let's think in this way. If the array is sorted, yeah. what property can we get? So usually we think in this way. We assume if the array is sorted, can we get some special property from it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We can. We can find something, some obvious property. Yeah. All right. Here we can assume the array elements are distinct for convenience. In the real world, we do not make this assumption. Yeah. But in our discussion, in our early investigation, we can make some convenient assumption. Later, we, we can remove it. Yeah. All right. Assume the array is sorted in this way. And elements sorted in this way. Now we do key observation. We know if it is sorted, then the first element is the minimum. That's obvious, right? That's obvious. 
Yes. But this minimum you can see related to our minimum problem. Right? It relate to our minimum problem. In other words, if you can find the minimum problem solution, can you get something here? You that kind of thinking, backward thinking, then you can see the critical property. All right? Yeah. So the minimum element is the first element in the sorted array. How about that? That is our key observation. All right. Okay, after that, then we keep going. Yeah, because if we know the first element is the minimum, that's not enough. We still need to look at other elements. Yeah. All right, so let us take away the first minimum element. Let us look at the remaining elements. Then, A1 is the minimum element of the remaining elements. How about that? So you can see, if we do another minimum problem, another time, we can get the second smallest element in the array. And so on. If we keep doing like this, can we get whole array sorted? That is the view we observe, uh, we take, that is the view we take for this solution. The solution. Yeah. A problem could have many solutions. Here we only we want to find one solution here. Yeah. So here we take this special view, minimum element view. Yeah, we focus on the minimum element. Yeah. Then we apply finding the minimum that problem, our old experience on this new problem. All right, now, so let me summarize the idea and try to get the whole solution here. Yeah. All right, here I draw this line of boxes for the positions of sorted array. Sorted array, yeah. So I leave all the positions empty, then I put elements one by one into the right positions of the sorted array. All right, so let's do the work. Yeah. First, we apply the minimum problem solution on it, so we get a minimum. Then we should put the minimum element as the first element in the array. So here we we call it this element is in place. Yeah, so that's the terminology we use in this situation, in place. Yeah. So that means the element is placed at the position when the array is sorted. That simple. Okay? All right. So we get the first element done yeah so we don't need to look at it anymore yeah next we look at the remaining elements okay the remaining n minus one elements can we apply the minimum problem solution another time to find the minimum element of the remaining n minus one elements yes we can when we do it we get another minimum element, but this one is the second smallest element, and we can put it in place. Okay. Then, after that, we exclude first two elements. 
Then we look at the remaining a minus two elements and apply the minimum problem solution. We can get the third element in place, and so on. We keep doing. When we process the last element, we do not need to do anything. Only one element left. We just directly put it in place. Then. We solve the whole problem. How about that? How about this solution? Here, we do not worry about if the solution is good or not. We can delay it. Yeah. Here, we just want to enjoy our solution, our successful. Enjoy the success. Solving this problem, okay? Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. So then we see where all the elements are in place. The array is sorted. Yeah. So here you can see we use this terminology a lot when we talk about sorting problem. Okay. All right. Next, let us do some simple analysis. How many comparisons do we need when we apply this algorithm? Yeah. All right. Total, you can see number of comparisons very easy. Yeah. One plus two plus dot 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 plus n minus one. Yeah. The first minimum you need n minus one comparisons. Then the second to last element in place, you need one comparison. Yeah. So then you add them these numbers up, you get the final formula like this. Yeah. All right. So after we get this number, number of expressions in this formula, I like you to think about the best case. Worst case and the average case. Yeah, I talk about best case, worst case, average case before, right? Yeah. That concept before. Yeah. When we learn the linear search, we learn that concept. Yeah. Here you can think about this question. Later I will answer this question. Okay. All right. Here, let's go back to the name of this solution. Remember the title of 8.1, Selection Sort. Why we call it Selection Sort, right? Why we call this sorting algorithm Selection Sort? The reason is very simple, because the minimum problem is selection problem, right? The minimum problem is one of the selection problems. So that's one. Yeah. But uh, if you look at the procedure, we make selection, right? Every round, we select the minimum element and uh, put it in place. And we apply this solution many rounds. And uh, finally, we put all the elements in place. So we solve the problem. Yeah. All right. So 